welcome to uh, episode five of the philosophy of nature. So I want to talk about today a concept that I, I found confusing back, you know, in my 20s when it was when I was really sorting this out or, you know, my late teens, because you hear there's no such thing as a, a monopole in nature. And yet that's funny because we've got like the electron and the proton that are that are monopoles, right? I mean, they're they're just one kind of charge. Magnetically, they're not one kind of charge. That's the weird thing. What? 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 Well, the, the electron is just a pure negative charge. How could there be a positive pole to a negative charge? Well, if you imagine that the electron is a solid ball of something, and that is a something with negative charge, how could that have a north and south pole? And the answer is pretty simple. If there is an electric current, right, if a bunch of electrons are going in a coil, you create an electromagnet. It's just electrons running in the coil, but it creates an electromagnet with a north and south pole. So for an electron to ha be a magnet, then you have to imagine that there is an electric current. For example, if it's a solid ball, which it's not, if it was spinning that would create an electric current, right? It's got negative parts and they're going in a circle that makes it electric current, a little microcurrent, which has a north and a south pole. And you can test what the magnetic, um, how much of a magnet something is by shooting it through a device that will deflect the particle based on its the, the orientation and strength of its magnetic moment, how much of a magnet it is. So they call it spin. They don't think it's spin. In reality, it's not actually spinning because if it was a solid ball of electric charge, they've already narrowed the electron down to such a tiny size. They don't know how big it is as, as far as last time I checked, but they know it's super small. There's a minimum or a maximum rather, a small maximum that it can be. And it would have to be spinning, you know, like crazy fast. However, the spinning is just a metaphor because what's really going on is to have that magnetic moment and be negative charge, there has to be a little microcurrent. It just means that electricity doesn't just sit there. Sitting there, I'm negative. It's always doing some little wiggling that ends up being a cycle. So it could be a circle, but it could also be other shapes, a figure eight, whatever. These would create little tiny magnetic uh, moments because it's an electromagnet. And the same is true for the proton. Now what's weird, or weirder, is that the neutron also is a little magnet. And it has no charge. But inside it, it's made of particles that have charge. And they're not exactly equally distributed. They're, you know, clump these three things in the, I think it's three quarks in the neutron. And again, if it was spinning, which it's not, then you'd have an electric current. So what's going on is, while it's not spinning, there is some charged current coursing around inside the neutron because it, it doesn't stay still. And that creates a little teeny tiny electromagnet and they call it spin because basically if you had a you know a, a billiard balls or a little tiny bb was the electron and it was spinning you could create uh, an electromagnet that way what they know is that it is a little tiny electromagnet right because that you can detect you can shoot it through a detector and see from the deflection that it has a little tiny magnetic moment. It's a tiny little magnet. It has a north pole. It's not a magnetic monopole. Now they're still trying to isolate and analyze the, this concept of a magnetic monopole. There's various people who would admit that you're going to always have a north and south pole that still have tricks. I've seen some videos recently about how to separate these magnetic um, poles from each other 
effectively, basically through through techniques, through kind of crystalline mathematic techniques, so they can be studied, and maybe they'll find that there's some sort of a monopole. You know, like there's some sort of an absolute zero, basically, where you stop the charge from making a circuit. You wouldn't have to stop it from moving at all. If you could stop it from moving in a little circle, some sort of a cycle, and it was moving back and forth or some other pattern, you know, that could also eliminate the, the magnetic aspect to the electromagnet because... You know, the, the current would not be in a cycle, which is what causes an electromagnet. So, that's why they say that. I mean, it's possible to just raise more questions to that, of course. But the empirical part from the experiments is that every particle is a little tiny magnet. And since some of them are made of pure negative or pure positive, the explanation is that that negative charge in the electron is not just sitting there in space hanging out without moving. It's always going in some little cycle, a circular vibration, basically. Because, you know, when you have something vibrating this way, and then in two dimensions you have it vibrating in the other way at the same time, if it's two sine waves... They go in a circle. Well, if it's a sine and a cosine. They go in a circle. And if it is two sines, then they go in some other cyclic shape. And if there are factors on the sines, they would go in still other shapes, but they're all cyclic. Right? And any of those cycles would create uh, a little microcurrent that creates an electromagnet. So that's why they say that, and that's how that can be, uh, even though... You know, an electron doesn't have positive charge in it. It's just that there's some little microcurrent inside that particle that's causing a little tiny electromagnet. All right, cheers.